Hey guys, Taka here from Legion of Chaos, legionofchaos.org, here with another mod spotlight for you guys today. This one will be In Spirit Craft by Caleb Manley. Links will be in the description below. This mod comes in two parts plus a core. The core is required and you can download either or both of the other two parts depending on what you want. The first part that we're going to look at is actually an attempt to bring mob drops into a vanilla environment for peaceful servers, allowing players who are playing in peaceful mode to get at things like bones and gunpowder and spider eyes, etc. So let's dive in and see what the first part of In Spirit Craft has to offer. All right, guys, first things first, thanks to Warbrant for setting up our filming area again. He's done a wonderful job for yet another mod spotlight, thanks to him. Now, this mod adds a couple of new ways to get these mob drops. The first are fossils, and they generate down in stone and down in caves. These fossils can be mined with any kind of pickaxe, including wood, but for brevity's sake, we're going to go ahead and use diamonds. Now, when you mine up one of the fossils... It gives you between one and I believe three bones. If you're not playing with skeletons in peaceful mode, then this would be a great way to get at bone meal. See, got two from that one right there. Now, there are two new ores that were added to the game, the first one being sulfur. And if we mine up this sulfur, it comes out in dust form. The sulfur can actually be used on top of a torch in place of coal to, or charcoal to create torches. So it's another source for torches. It usually spawns in groups of one or two, fairly commonly around. I didn't seem to have too much problem finding sulfur. The other material that has also been added is nitre. And when we mine up the nitre, it also comes out in a dust form, two or three of the dusts per ore that you mine out. Again, all of this is mineable with a wooden pickaxe, but the diamond pickaxe is just going to make it a little bit faster. Now, something interesting you can do with the nitre is you can actually combine it with bone meal. You can actually get a bone meal doubling. If you combine it, nitre with bone meal, you actually get to bone meal. Great way to expand the number of bone meal you get if you don't have anything like a pulverizer or macerator. Now something else you can do with the nitre and sulfur is combine it with charcoal in a shapeless crafting recipe to give you, oh wait, that's bone meal, gunpowder. Two gunpowder in specific. Since you're not going to be killing creepers in peaceful mode, it's a great way to get at that gunpowder. Now something else that is added is the spider's nest, which I have one right here. When breaking a spider's nest, hold on to your hats, it spawns between two and three baby spiders. Don't worry, they're passive. Even on peaceful mode, they will still spawn. Now they're easy to kill, and they drop spider eyes. Great. No, oh, no, come back. No, don't go in there. Well, since we're here anyway, this is the other new item, the slime pool. The slime pool spawns with a rarity about the same as dungeons, and if you're not in peaceful mode, it will actually rarely spawn one or two slimes. I actually had some slimes jumping around before I actually switched this server environment to peaceful mode. They were making a lot of racket, so I had to get rid of them. But you get stuck in here because you are sliding, sinking into a half block. There's no way out except to punch your way out, and it will drop a couple of slime balls. Now, if you go ahead and you get four of these slime balls, you can actually recraft the slime pool because the slime pool will actually slow your fall and prevent you from taking fall damage if you fall into it. Excellent. The next part of the In Spirit Craft Peaceful module is flax. I found most flax growing in jungles and in plains, but maybe your experience is different. It's fairly rare, but if you do find it, it's a great way to get string. The flax comes in three stages, the first stage, the second stage, and the, finally the fully flowered stage. And if you want to harvest string, you have to get it up to the fully flowered stage. The first stage will only drop seeds. The second stage will also only drop seeds. But if it's fully flowered, it will actually drop this, flax fibers. If you can collect two of them, as we have right here, you can craft those into string. Beautiful. You can finally get bows in peaceful mode. Not that you'd need them, but I digress. Now, to plant these, you actually do not need to even till the ground. It plants right on normal grass or dirt. Just 
plant them right across, and we can use our newly obtained and doubled through our ores bone meal to go ahead and grow them all up and then harvest them. Get those flax fibers and get some more string. Beautiful. Now there's a few more things that the peaceful module adds, but to check those out, we're gonna have to head to the nether. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey guys, welcome to the nether. Let's see what sort of in spirit craft peaceful module drops we can get in here. The first of which being the ghast egg. The ghast egg spawns naturally in the nether and by right clicking on it, we can attempt to harvest ghast tears. Now it's a 50, 50 chance every time you right click and it gets smaller each time. This is the smallest size here. Oh, here's another small one. Nope. Let's go for the big one here. Oh, there's one tier, two tiers and three from the biggest size one. Like I said, a 50-50 chance each time, and that's actually three out of three. So not bad at all, 50-50 chance. Another thing you might want to find in the nether, you have to look for these large pools of lava because that's the only place they spawn, is the Kindlewood tree. Now the Kindlewood tree's logs are not as useful as other parts of the tree. Now they are fireproof, see they will catch on fire but they will not actually burn up. And you can't craft them into any kind of cool planks to keep your house from catching on fire or anything like that. The Kindlewood logs are only good for throwing into your furnace as a fuel source. What we really want to get at is the leaves. If we head on up here to the Kindlewood leaves, what they drop with about a 10% chance is, up oh, there we go, blaze powder. Now the blaze powder, of course, you would normally only be able to get from blazes and deconstructing blaze rods. So what are we gonna do with it from these Kindlewood leaves? Well, we're actually going to look at one more item. Let's take our iron ingots out of here and let's craft some iron rods. And what do you think we're gonna do with these iron rods? Combine them with some, some blaze powder and get blaze rods. Excellent. Now there's a few more things we can look at in the InSpiritCraft Peaceful module, and we're going to take a look at the InSpiritCraft Beekeeping module back on the overworld. So I'll see you guys up there. Alright guys, the final stop on our InSpiritCraft journey will be Port Chaos. Take you anywhere you want to go, just talk to Claude here. But we're not here to travel, we're here to get in on what all the fishermen are calling the Enderclam Phenomenon. They're all over down there. Enderclams are something that has been added by in Spiritcraft Peaceful Module that will allow you to get Ender Pearls. They only appear in ocean biomes and they usually appear in groups, but they're really difficult to find. So there's a few things we need to get them. First, of course, our diamond pickaxe. Now, you can mine it with a regular wooden axe. However, with the natural mining fatigue of being underwater, it takes a long time. We're also going to go ahead and enchant up with some underwater breathing and some night vision so we can see what we're looking at. Excellent. And out we go. Oop. All right, perfect. Bobbing along. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, there's the port up there. They said there were some ender clams. Wait, what are these? Oh, take a look. Looks like we've got some ender clams right here underneath the port. They had no idea they were right under their feet. Got one, two, three, four of them spawning right here in this ocean biome. So let's go ahead and let's mine them up. Again, it takes some time because of mining underwater. And if you could use a beacon to give yourself haste, that would actually be pretty good because it's really easy to drown trying to get these things up. But once they break, you can actually get a couple of ender pearls. We got one ender pearl there. Let's come over and get this guy here. Now, the reason that these are so rare and they're so hard to find, by the mod creator's own words, is because endermen are also very rare and hard to find. So getting a hold of ender pearls is not supposed to be easy. Honestly, without night vision and without the water breathing potion, finding these is extremely difficult. But not impossible, but they do always spawn in ocean biomes, so you have to take maybe a door or a trapdoor or a ladder and some blocks with you to create yourself an air bubble to get at these things and have time to mine them down before you drown. Just some fun ideas. And now that we've seen everything in the peaceful module, let's go ahead and take a look at what the still in development beekeeping module has to offer. I'm gonna go ahead, shake off these potion effects, get out of the water, get dry, and I'll see you guys looking for some beehives. See you up there. All beekeeping journeys need to start with the beehive. 
The beehive is a rare spawn, pretty rare actually, underneath any kind of leaves, but that of course means it's going to be easier to spot in foresty areas that are a bit more sparsely populated. A jungle would make it very difficult to spot this in the trees, looking through all the vines and undergrowth. Uh, but I had really good success finding these in swamp biomes. I'm not sure if that's by design or just my personal experience. Now, before we go into this thing, because they are fairly rare, they do say it's dangerous to go alone. So let's take this. Might need this. The bees might not be happy with me uh, breaking their hive. So here we go. Just going to punch away the hive. And sure enough, it spawns a swarm of rather angry bees. They're pretty easy to dispatch of, though. One swipe with even a stone sword will take them out and give me a little bit of experience. But the thing that we really want here is this queen bee. The queen bee is the key to all further beekeeping. Now let's go ahead and head down to Port Chaos and see what else we can do with beekeeping. Now you'll notice that we got another drop there, a little drop of honey. We'll address that in just a moment. But the first thing we're going to need is an apiary. So the recipe for an apiary is four of wooden planks, two wooden slabs, and three iron will give you the apiary. But there is one problem. We can't just dive in and start looking at an apiary. We need a beekeeper's mask. So let's go ahead and craft one up really quick. There we go, a beekeeping mask. And if I put on my beekeeping mask, hey, looking good. We can go ahead and open up the apiary and we can insert our queen bee. Now the queen bee does have a limited lifespan and she will continue to output items throughout the span of her life. And unless you want to go out and find another queen bee in another hive under another tree, which is very rare, there are better ways of getting more queen bees, which has to do with our next machine, the incubator. The recipe for the incubator does require one glowstone, so you do need to make a trip to the nether to get this, plus some glass, slabs, planks, and a couple pieces of iron. What we're going to put in here is one of three of the items that she will produce over the course of her life, grubs. Grubs come in one size, two size, or five size. And if we go ahead and we put our grubs into the incubator, it will over time give us more queen bees that we can then feed back into the apiary and create more items. Something else that comes out of the queen bee are combs, honeycombs and wax combs. We can actually craft these into some really cool blocks like the honeycomb block or the wax comb block. Sorry, wax block. They look really cool and they're really fun building materials. Here we go, the honeycomb block. And right over here, the wax block. That's the way the two of them look. And then what we can also do is take these combs, the wax comb and honeycomb, and put them into our final machine, the comb presser. The comb presser is made with a whole bunch of iron, a bucket to hold the things we press out, and a piece of glass, which is of course this really cool little window here. I love this machine because it makes a really cool animation when we put in a wax comb. Look at that. Excellent. And once it's done, fills up and done, we get pressed wax. Now what can pressed wax be used for? Pressed wax can be, oops, there we go. Pressed wax is used to make all of the really cool candles that you have seen. Combining it with some string can give us two of those candles that are just as good as torches. And also putting the pressed wax can be made into a block. You can also use pressed wax with some obsidian and any music discs you find to make copies for your friends. It supports all of the vanilla music discs, copying them all over. Eleven is one of my favorites, actually. Now, using these candles, we can put a gold ingot or iron ingot to create chandeliers. Very nice, very fancy golden chandeliers and iron chandeliers. I have them right here. Here's the golden chandelier, putting out a nice bit of light there, and the iron chandelier right over here. Very nice. Now, instead of putting a wax comb into the comb presser, let's put in a honeycomb. It will actually go ahead and go through its process and then give us two items. Not just the pressed wax, but also a little honey drop, which we also got from the bees. It's a chance uh, drop from the bees. What we can do with this honey drop is actually augment our food and give it a couple of extra cool abilities. We have the honey glazed pork and its raw form. Now you can also combine it with nether wart from the nether to create slime balls if you couldn't come across any of those slime pools we looked at earlier. 
Finally, if you get enough of the honey drops and put it inside of a glass bottle, you get a bottle of honey. The bottle of honey is great. Let's go ahead and take a swig. Because it gives us a 30 second speed buff. Carry a bunch of these around and you can get all around town at high speed. I really think this mod is cool. There are a couple of new things planned for the beekeeping mod, including more augmented foods and effects from those foods, and something that the mod author is calling the bee gun. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. I'm looking forward to checking out what more this mod's going to add in the future as it moves into 172 and 174. This has been the Inspiracraft Beekeeping and Peaceful Modules. Links in the description below by Caleb Manley. I'm Taka from Legion of Chaos. Can't wait to see you all in-game. See you later. Music